Hi, my name is Aaron with iBoard Repair and iPhone Data Recovery, and today I'm working on an iPhone 12 Pro Max. Uh, this phone has a very unique problem uh, that I want to share with you. I've already done half of this job. Well, I shouldn't say half. I've done uh, some of this job. It was very unremarkable in the beginning. Um, so I've taken off some of these shields. This was water damage, so I was checking what was going on underneath these shields. Um, I haven't split the board because I wasn't sure if it was necessary to do so or not, especially because things look so clean. Um, most of my corrosion was actually right around this power button, and this power button actually seems to be the root cause of my problem. So I want to show you what this phone is doing right now when I try to boot it. It's booting to a diagnostic mode, which uh, before this I had actually, I didn't even know that existed, but apparently it's been a thing since iPhone 10. If you plug in a phone, and hold both the power and the home button. I'm sorry, both the, if you hold both the volume up and the volume down button while you have it plugged in, it will boot to a diagnostic mode. However, I have an iPhone 12 Pro Max here that's booting to the diagnostic mode with nothing plugged in. So I wanna show you that right now. So we can wait for this to boot. I also noticed that it takes a while after plugging in the home button for this Apple logo to show up. I'm not sure why, but maybe that's related. Um, basically, I think this has a PMIC problem. Um, the way these buttons work is that there's a constant voltage running through them, um, almost 1.8 volts. Um, let me silence that call. So there's almost 1.8 volts running through here. I, I measured on a donor board about 1.5 or 1.6, and that measurement was on the volume up, the volume down, and the power button line. Um, in this case, this phone is booting to a diagnostic mode. Can you see that? You can't really see it, can you? So it's very, very dim. I'd pick it up if I could, but I don't have a real easy way to do so. Um, anyways, this is booting to a mode, it just says diagnostics on it, and this shouldn't be showing up on my screen unless I'm pressing both the volume down and the volume up buttons. Um, as I was explaining a second ago, those buttons should have a voltage running through them at, uh, you know, just a little bit under 1.8. Um, and then when you press the button, it's actually shorting it to ground and that voltage drops to zero. And that's what indicates a button press. Um, so both of my voltages on this phone are zero, which means that the phone thinks that the buttons are being pressed even when they're not. And this only goes to the PMIC. So it must be that the PMIC is not providing the voltage that this phone needs. Um, just so you can see what I'm talking about, I'll measure voltages on this phone at those lines. Let me just plug this in again. I realize that an iPhone 12 battery also works on 12 Pro Max. You have to be careful. It's not the way you think it is. You have to put it in backwards. So if I prompt this phone to boot, And I go ahead and I measure the voltage on those buttons. This is volume up, I believe. You see 0 0.005. This one is volume down, 0 0.04. And then this one's the power button, 0 0.004. All of those are incorrect. And they are making the phone think that buttons are being pressed. So as an example of what it should look like, I do have a donor board here and that's how I was able to um, verify, you know, what I was kind of thinking. So if I take my donor board and I do that same test, we'll find that we do have voltage on those lines. So I just want to show you that very quickly. So 
I'll prompt this one to boot. Uh, let's see. You can see the Apple logo on it. Here's the Apple logo. And then when I measure those lines again, we can see that volume up has 1.6, volume down has 1.6, and power button has 1.6. So that's what it should be reading, and that's ow. That's what it looks like when a phone will boot up fully. So this phone is fully booted right now. Um, when you don't have the proximity sensor plugged in, the screen is very, very dim, which is why you can't really see it, um, but it's booting. I just dropped one of my probes on my toe. You know, point down, these things are kind of sharp. Just punctured my toe a little bit. So, knowing that, how do I approach this problem? So, I think the simplest solution is going to be to jump these lines to a 1.8 voltage line. That way, the lines will be at the proper voltage, or a little bit higher, but I don't think it will matter than it's supposed to be. And that will disable the buttons. The buttons will no longer be able to, to work, I believe. If I use the pull-up resistor, they still might work, but if I'm just using um, a bridge to ground, a line to ground, I think that should disable the buttons, um, but they'll be at their proper voltage and the phone, and yeah, the, the motherboard won't think that the buttons are being pressed anymore. Um, so let's try that. I have no idea if it will work. I've never done this before, but I have already exposed the lines that I plan on jumping, which are one of these ones, some of these ones, let's see what they were. I don't remember. So volume up is the middle one. Volume down is the top one. So I'll bridge the middle and the top one and then I'll also have to bridge the power button um, because if I, uh, one other thing, if I, if I, you can only prompt the diagnostic mode if you have the, um, the charging port plugged in as well as pressing the volume up and volume down. So the other thing I tested was if I just don't plug in that power button, will it still go to that mode? Um, and it does not go to that mode, but it did go to recovery mode, which means that the phone thinks the power button is also being plugged in because there's no voltage there. So I also need to jump the power button to make sure um, it doesn't think that button is also being pressed. So I think this will work, just jumping to 1.8 voltage here and it should allow me to get to full boot on my phone and then I can pull the data from it and have the customer be happy. So I'm just going to bridge a couple of these pads. They're right next to each other so it's, that's real convenient. A little bit too much flux, so it takes them off. Perfect, let's see if I can do that same thing to the other line. It's actually kind of hard to get the solder to do that sometimes, so I'm glad that went first try. There we go, that also looks good. And now I'm gonna expose the power button line. Well, I kinda, yeah, I'll just expose the power, I'll just do it now, that's fine. So the power button line is up in this area. Let me see which one exactly it is. Should be right here. No, should be right over here.
So these lines down here are PP1VA and this is 1VA always. Um, because it's a different line, let me just see what it does now when I plug it in. Um, because the home button isn't fixed, I expect um, that it will boot to recovery mode because it's going to think the power button is being pressed right now. Um, but if it doesn't boot to the diagnostic mode, then I'll know that um, then that this method is working, if that makes sense. So, I really hope it will boot to recovery mode. I mean, it'd be fine if it boots to full boot, that's fine as well, of course, but I just really don't want to see that diagnostic mode because now those power buttons should no longer be zero voltage and the motherboard should no longer think that volume up and volume down are being pressed. So I shouldn't have diagnostic mode, but if it thinks the power button is being pressed, I should have recovery mode. So let's see what it does. Also the Apple look, boom, recovery mode. That's perfect. This method is absolutely gonna work. This is great. I think it's gonna work. I'm so happy to see that. I, I didn't know if that was gonna work. Good, good, good. So now I will short the power button line as well. And it's kind of weird because on older models, there would be a pull-up resistor right here um, that's securing the 1.8 voltage line. But this one doesn't have, them, have it. It just relies on the PMIC exclusively. On older models, I don't know if it goes to the PMIC at all or if it just uses the pull-up resistor from the 1.8 line. But now when I short this power button to 1.8, this is being shorted to 1v8 always which is a different line um, I, I don't think it should matter as long as this line isn't zero because that's what that's what it's checking for So now, now I expect it to boot. Really hope it does. I think it will. So now the, the motherboard won't think that the, the power button is being pressed anymore either. And it should boot up fully. And this is a result of a failing PMIC because all the corrosion hit that, that, uh, that connector right there. If I can find the housing, I could show you how bad it looked. Well, here it is right on this. So this is the, the connector right here, and it was very corroded. And that seems to have killed those voltage lines on the PMIC. And I already checked if it was shorted to ground, and it was not shorted to ground. So a short was not causing this. It's just a PMIC not supplying the power. So this is the big moment. I hope it works, because this actually took me quite a while to figure out. I didn't understand what was going on in the beginning. So let's see if we get a boot now. Password. So 
so dim screen's good. It's going to go dim before it fully boots. And I do have a full boot on here. I see home screen image. Let's see, four, one, three, one. It's booting to swipe to recover mode. And I'm not sure if the 12 Pro needs power button in order to not get the three minute reboot. So I'm gonna be testing that off camera. But for the most part, this job is finished. I'm gonna be successful on it. I have full boot. Um, it takes the passcode. Um, this is great. I'm really, really happy this method worked. I, I was very unsure if it was going to. Um, Eric Davies helped me a little bit with this one. He, he was the one that kind of helped me understand how the functionality of the buttons work. Um, He's always kind of my go-to for like general electronics questions because I don't understand, uh, you know, things outside of the realm of iPhones. I only know how things on iPhones work. So he, he kind of verified that the button is supposed to have voltage and that by pressing it, it brings it down to zero. And I was able to figure out that that would mean that uh, the PMIC was not supplying the voltage. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't be zero, of course. Um, so... That's it. This is the video. Um, if you ever run into this problem where it's booting to diagnostic mode or it's booting to recovery mode and the power button connector was corroded, um, you can always just go ahead and measure that voltage. See if you're getting your proper 1.6 volts. If it's zero um, and you don't have any power button plugged in, then that definitely indicates uh, PMIC is not working. And if you just need the phone to turn on again, you can just short it to one of these 1.8 lines and it will turn on. Um, I don't think the actual button will work anymore, but it doesn't matter. I don't need that button to work. So hope you guys learned something. Hope you have a good day and see you next time. Bye-bye.